What's going on there, folks? Welcome back here. It is the Earth Master back on this uh, Wednesday night, uh, January 17th, 2024. It's about 11.05 uh, p.m. here. Nighttime. Uh, latest activity shows a 2.6 and also a 1.8 into the Alaska region. Uh, getting some deep activity out here in the Fiji Islands area once again, Tonga Trench. Uh, first covering Iceland activity here, looking at about 23 earthquakes in the last 12 hours. Really not seeing any signs of any um, major uptick currently. Um, things are still just kind of at a standstill currently. Not seeing a whole lot of activity here across the Grindavik area of Iceland either. So um, for now, things are calm. Although the GPS uh, activity out here continues to rise in terms of inflation out here still seeing that little, little movement here in the upwards trend so we'll continue to watch that and check back on any major changes uh let's check out the latest information here from the usgs hawaii out here lighten up slightly uh, mostly around the pahala area not a whole lot here across the region of the big island or the uh, kilauea volcano but uh continuing to watch that as well that is one of the volcanoes that's currently experiencing a uh a large inflation event there and we're going to double check that here real quick see if we can uh maybe that's a little odd here volcano wow look at that when you click on their website the volcano hazards map just goes to the usgs.gov that's a little odd maybe they're uh maybe they're updating their system out here but uh oh goodness okay so i'm gonna have to check the uh uh, images, video, lava flow. Let me go over and check out the tilt meter here myself here and see if I can find it. UWE tilt. This is going to be the latest information here in the last uh, 30 days. Still kind of leveling out here in the last couple days. Haven't really seen that further push of inflation. This is the last 30 days of inflation activity there at the summit region. We'll have to check back on their uh, their map here later uh, looks like they're definitely doing uh, some changes potentially, or maybe it could be offline. I don't know. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here across the area of the states. Uh, movement up into the Pacific Northwest here. Some small uh, movement here across the Strait of Juan de Fuca. That's going to be the one of the latest earthquakes here. 55 kilometers deep for a 3.3. Uh, that is. Uh, I, I believe into the Cascadia subduction zone here. It's not a surface uh, fault quake. Definitely deeper uh, into the regions there. Uh, also up here, we did see a little bit of activity uh, last night in this region. Very shallow for a little 2.0. Uh, so just kind of watching that. Uh, definitely seen some trimmer activity here recently. Let's check out tonight's trimmer. And we're looking at, uh, again, 106 epicenters of trimmer. There underneath the Olympia area, the last week or so, most of the trimmer has been confined to that area. Not a large event, but uh, roughly about 385 epicenters of trimmer. Again, mostly underneath this area of Washington. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, some movement out here. The latest one shows a 0.1 there in the uh, Yellowstone area, but uh, goodness, there's definitely been a little bit more. The USGS didn't, uh, I was hoping they would pick out all the earthquakes that kicked up earlier this morning as well, but it uh, doesn't look like they have, um, some of these are offline here. I think that's just because the uh, the uh, the way the UTC, the UTC time works. But far as uh, earthquake activity goes, uh, there's some of that movement earlier uh, this morning, it looks like for the most part, things are quiet. This movement you're seeing here on the map, um, I believe is wind, right? Uh, some type of wind event going on up there, but I, I want to double check and see what we got here. Um, what I find kind of odd too is that, uh, I'll show you guys here in a second. Let me bring up the windy map here and see what's going on. If it's windy up there or not, uh, there in that area, these are just sustained winds but the wind gusts themselves definitely picking up a uh, big time out here probably higher at some of these other uh regions 43 mile per hour gusts out there so those are definitely some wind um wind activity showing up here on the graphs i was going to say uh this station right here norris museum is supposed to be sheltered but it looks like that's picking up some noise as well from the wind 
All right, uh, what else we got here for California? Not looking at anything major going on here. Very minimal movement, uh, to say the least. Just general microquake activity out here. Getting a handful of quakes out in this little zone here east of the San Andreas Fault. But for the most part, things are uh, fairly quiet out there. All right, uh, here's the deeper activity triggering down here uh, into the Tonga Trench. The latest one, though, shows a 4.8 558 kilometers deep, um, 5.8 uh, coming in here a couple hours ago. That was a little bit further upstream from that deeper activity. So it looks like things may want to move here across this area. Uh, the surface regions there, we'll watch pretty closely. Um, 5.8, decent size earthquake, right? But this area could no doubt see uh, some much larger movement. Way over here on the opposite side of the globe, 5.3 into the south. Sandwich Islands there, a uh, fairly recent earthquake. The USGS is reporting up on this earthquake. Uh, they're at about 54 kilometers deep uh, just a couple hours or so ago. Uh, another odd quake out here. Goodness, we're getting these odd ones, uh, these intraplate earthquakes. 5.1 away from the plate boundary. Uh, if I remember right, about a week or so ago, I think we've seen another earthquake in this region. Maybe it's been over that. Let me see here. 30 days has it been over 30 days oh is it right over here that's right so this odd earthquake uh, kicking back up on the 10th 5.2 uh, ways away from the uh, plate boundary this one here is uh, in, in another odd spot away from the plate boundary so uh, not for sure um, what's going on out there but historical data tells us that there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity out there most of the, the uh, earthquakes occur along the plate boundaries and the subsequent faults. But specifically out here in this zone, well, maybe down south here, 100 miles or so. But uh, a little bit of odd activity working its way there into the, um, the Nazca plate. It's going to be this plate right here. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Uh, aside from that, getting some clustering going on once again. Fairly decent amount here. Uh, there across the Indonesia Islands area and the Java Trench. See what we got uh, here today. Mostly fours and some threes stirring up here across this area. Um, I'm just noticing South America pick up here uh, in the last couple hours. 4.0 and some other movement here following this activity. I don't know if this would play a part on the movement over here. In general, though, uh, what goes on here across the plate boundary does affect the subduction zone over here um, across the area of South America. But uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens here. But for now, 4.0 coming in to the uh, Chile area, it looks like. One earthquake way up north, well north of uh, Greenland. Mediterranean area, seen a handful of earthquakes as well. We'll keep an eye on the rift zones out here, the divergent zones across the um, the ocean plates here uh, the plate boundary uh, i think once this kicks back up here again once we see some further activity we'll see iceland kick back up here uh, and possibly resume activity southward all right uh what else do we have look at that 4.7 that's just coming in right now huh oh within the last hour well let me see here let's see usgs reporting it they are but it's way up there look at that i can barely see it, it actually won't even let me click on it Oh, goodness. Let me see if I can... Uh, yeah, see, it's way up there. It will not let me click on it, and uh, it doesn't even show up here on the map. So it's a little odd. <laughs> Either way, some activity showing up here on the globe model here. All right, um, let's see what else we got. Let's check out space weather real quick. Just doing a quick update here, folks. Space weather, there's not a whole lot going on here in terms of... Uh, a flaring activity. Noticing a couple sea flares here in the last few hours. It looks as though we may have an active region coming up here across the eastern, northeastern limb of the sun, uh, but really not a whole lot of um, complexity here or advancement with these uh, further sunspots. There is the unnamed sunspot there on the northeastern limb. And a look at it right now. It's a, it's a decent size sunspot, but uh, there, again, there's not a whole lot of complexity similar to all these other sunspots out here. Uh, so on, until that changes, 
the threat for flaring and the uh, threat for uh, auroras are very minimal right now. 95% chance for a C flare, M flare, 25% chance X flare. Still at 5%, that's what they say. I don't see it, but uh, that's what they are calling. Severe weather out here. Not a whole lot in the coming days. As uh, far as the weather forecast goes here, uh, we do have a, a rainmaker coming in this weekend to the west coast. Most of the, the rest of the country stays fairly dry, it looks like, throughout the weekend. Cold, uh, but dry until this warmer batch of rain comes up from Texas and uh, brings with it uh, potential for some severe weather. But that looks to be the pattern for a little bit there in the south, uh, bringing in that substantial moisture and warmer conditions there. Look at that, just bringing in lots of rainfall potential there. Uh, the accumulated precipitation amounts out here show some impressive totals out here. Look at that area south into Texas and Louisiana. We're talking about, well, at least this model showing maybe 10 to 14 inches of rainfall. This could be some, uh, some flooding potential out here. Have to keep an eye on that as we head uh, through the uh, rest of January. Out here in California, uh, let me bring this down a little bit. Most of our storm systems coming up here uh, this weekend supposed to bring a, a decent amount of precipitation. Uh, right around where I live here in Northern California, just outside of Chico, we should pick up around three inches or so. Less as you head to Sacramento and even less as you head into the uh, San Joaquin Valley area. Stockton, Modesto area will get uh, probably... Uh, around an inch and a half or less for that uh, little region down here around San Diego. Looking at some impressive rainfall totals. But uh, either way, at least we're looking at uh, the, uh, you know, the precipitation accumulation rates going up. That is a good sign. All right, folks, I'm going to back out of here. Have yourself a good day. Uh, yeah. Uh, aside from that, just kind of a waiting game with everything right now. Chili, there's that four-pointer that showed up there just a few minutes ago. I showed you guys on the uh, globe. Small little spike of an earthquake there in Southern California around Barrett. But aside from that, no major earthquake activity taking place here globally for now. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow morning. Take care.